Okay, this is a video on how to draw the bow front cabinet for Year 11 Timber. Make sure you have a SketchUp file that's set in millimetres. We're going to draw the leg first. I'm going to pick up that rectangle tool, draw a square, and you're just going to type in 40, 40. Okay. Pick up that push pull tool at the top. I'm going to click once, pull that leg up to any distance, but we're going to type in 440 and press enter. I'm going to pick up the mouse tool there and just delete the man, he doesn't need to be there. This is the orbit tool just to rotate around and get a better view. Pick up the tape measure tool here. We're going to draw in a measurement of 10. Basically just give us some guide points and 100 mil up. I'm going to connect those two guide points with the pencil tool. Okay, this is going to give us our little splay at the bottom of our legs, our little detail at the bottom. So again that was 10 mil at the bottom and 100 mil up with the guide points using the tape measure and joining the line, uh, drawing a line between those guide points. Now we pick up the push pull tool and click and drag through on that surface to give us that detail there. Okay, pick up the pencil tool draw a line straight across from uh, on that um, surface on that side and we're going to put that detail in on this side. This is slightly trickier though. I'm going to pick up that tape measure tool and measure 10mm across at the bottom. It's going to have the same profile. So just type in 10 and press enter. I'm going to pick up that pencil tool and join it up to the top there. Pick up that push pull tool again. This time we're only going to be able to go to the um, not the whole way. The reason is because that surface we're trying to extrude to is not um, vertical because it's got that edge on it, that slight angle. It doesn't allow you to extrude any further. So what we're going to have to do is draw some lines in with pencil tool here and then delete some other lines. So I'm going to put the pencil tool from the bottom point there, click, drag up to the top and click again. Okay, and that will give us that edge profile that we're after. Now we're going to pick up the eraser tool and erase the lines we don't need. We orbit around, now you can see that that edge profile on the bottom there, that little splay is going to be completed. You need to orbit around so you can see the entire leg there. I'm just going to pick up the mouse tool and select the entire leg. A two finger click on your mouse pad and select make component. I'm going to call it the leg, obviously. Click on create. A big part of this project is creating all components separately and then just putting them together makes it easier in the long run. Okay, now we're going to draw the side. So pick up that rectangle tool. Click once, similar to the size we want. And I'm just going to type in 19, comma 140. It's going to give us 19 wide by 140 long. Press enter. And then we can pick up the push pull tool. And we're going to drag that up to a length of 340 millimetres. 
and press enter. Now we're going to highlight just like we did with the leg, make component, I'm going to call that the side. beauty of that is once we draw each component we don't have to draw them twice we can copy and paste those components in. Now we're going to draw the backing again draw a rectangle this time 300 comma 4 it's only four millimeters thick the plywood at the back of the cabinet and push pull make that 302 millimeters high it's really important, don't make it 300, make it 302. Pick up the mouse pointer, select the object, two finger click, make component, call that the backing. Now we're going to make the base. I'm going to do this by drawing a rectangle first, 300, 230. The reason I've orbited around then just to make sure that the 300 is on um, that right plane there. We got the tape measure tool here. I'm going to set a guide point 19 millimeters back. So just type in 19 and press enter. This is to draw the curve. So I'm going to get the line tool there and draw a line across. That's 19 millimeters set back. I'm also going to pick up the midpoint here. And draw a line across. That's going to give us points to be able to draw our arc, our curve at the front of our, our bow front cabinet here. I mean, that's a, that's a, um, a really important feature of this piece of furniture. Make sure you pick up two point arc. Select the first point and then the second point by mouse clicking and then click on the third point to get that arc drawn like that. Once we've done that we can erase the lines that we don't need. And of course, once that's done, we can push pull and make that a 3D object. It's always easiest to create the profile you need in a 2D shape and then push pull it being the last thing you do. That was push pulled at 19 millimeters. If in doubt, just check the, the measurements I'm typing down in the measurements box down in the top right, right hand, uh, sorry, bottom right hand corner there. A two finger click, make this a component, call it the base. Okay, now we're going to copy and paste that base um, as we're going to use that same front profile to draw our two supports or braces for the drawer above it. There's no point having to draw that, that front curve profile again. I'm going to right click on it and make it unique. It's very important because any changes we make to this piece will be reflected in the original piece if we don't do that. You've got to make sure you press on uh, and make this new piece that we've pasted, make it unique first. Now basically we're going to double click on the piece so we can edit it. Also a really important step. Get the tape measure tool and we're going to set back from that front edge there, we're going to set back 30 millimeters. I type 30 and press enter. Pick up that pencil tool, draw a line over to the other side. Then simply we're going to get the push pull tool. If we push pull down to the bottom edge there, that will erase that part of that component. And we have the front brace.
And now we're going to look at uh, combining these components. So we can pick up that move tool. We want to drag from one point on one component to another point. So you can see I picked up the point on that side that I want to marry up to that point on the leg. So don't just pick it up anywhere random, make sure you pick up a point. We can orbit around to make it easier for us to drag pieces around. Now I'm going to select that leg. I'm going to copy and paste the leg. Here's where component editing really starts to benefit. Because we have that move tool already selected, you can see at the bottom there, we need to just select that move tool. At the top, you'll see plus signs come up. If you connect onto one of those plus signs, you'll be able to rotate your leg. And that's important so that that bottom profile is facing in the right direction. Here I'm just going to zoom in to make sure I can locate um, this point to point. Sometimes it wants to play silly games, it's just worth persisting with zooming in, as you can see here. Make sure your side, as you can see there, is on the inside of those legs. Okay, now because the other side of the cabinet is the same, we're going to copy and paste. Over to the other side. You can see that that's facing the wrong way though, in terms of where the side is. And what you can do here, if I pick up that move tool, because they're three different components, it's not going to allow me to move it, or rotate it, sorry. So what we need to do is right, uh, two finger click and make group. Once we've made it a group, now we can pick up that move tool, pick up one of those points at the top and rotate it. So again, you won't be able to rotate that unless you group those components together. Okay, now we're actually going to draw the back brace. We'll type in 300,40. Obviously draw that rectangle first and then 300 by 40. I'm going to push pull that up 19 millimeters. And select that and make it a component call that the back brace. Just going to move that uh, that backing away just so it's easier to, to move here. You'll notice something I do here is I always go back to the mouse pointer and click on the, just an open space to deselect anything before I start moving objects. If you find that you're trying to move objects and you're not moving the right objects, it's a good thing to do is to go back to the mouse pointer, like here, and cl just click on, um, just on the open air. Okay, to, that just ensures that you're deselecting objects that you don't want to move anymore. Okay, we're going to pick up this base, we're going to pick up from that point, so the move tool and point to point. Again, mouse pointer onto open air so nothing's selected. Pick up that mouse pointer, select the front brace there. Pick up that top point at the end of the curve, and we're going to 
But when I'm zooming in and out here, I'm just using two fingers on the trackpad to zoom in and out. So two fingers up to zoom in, two fingers uh, towards yourself to, to zoom back out. Okay, that top point married up with the top point of that leg there. Remember if you're in doubt, just rewind the video and have a look and a listen again. And I'm going to use the move tool to drag that whole group or that whole side group over to that back brace. Starting to look like a cabinet. Okay, now I'm going to move that uh, backing onto the back. I'm going to move that point there, so the outside point. See here, it didn't really want to marry up. That sometimes happens. You just have to pick up the orbit tool and the move tool and just orbit around until it wants to play. There we go. Okay, now we need to pick up the tape measure tool and from the bottom of that top brace there, we're going to measure down 102 millimetres. That's going to give us a guide point. I'm going to copy and paste that top brace. Remember, just uh, place that anywhere and then pick up that top point, so the top curve there, married up to that guide point that we drew with the tape measure. I remember that was 102 millimetres. 102 millimetres because our draw is 100 millimetres high so that gives us 2 millimetres for it to slide in and out. And that there is the main carcass of the Bowfront cabinet completed. Okay, what we're going to do here is draw the uh, curved front and we'll draw a rectangle the dimensions of 300 by 50. To get the front curve here, what we're going to do is, is pick up the mouse pointer, double click on the base, pick up the front curve, and just that line, the single line, we're going to copy and paste. So remember in SketchUp, once you draw something, you don't have to draw it again. You can pick up those in, that information. Drop that line in there and then marry it up from that point to the back of the rectangle. As you can see there. We'll get the tape measure from that back point. It'll give us a guide point that's 20 millimeters. 20 and press enter. I'm going to paste that curve again and drop it into open space. Get the move tool onto that end point and marry it up to that guide point. So that gives us a curve that marries up with the curve we already have and it's 20 millimeters thick, which is the thickness of our door. To have that profile, you can pick the eraser tool and erase those other lines. So again, basically we're drawing the profile of the component before, so we're drawing it in 2D before we extrude. What I'm going to do here is just uh, measure or double check the measurement. It's come up as 181 millimeters that gap. It's always important to do that, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, 
get the push pull tool and push pull that up at 179. Press enter. So that gives us a mil a millimeter play on the top and the bottom. Once you've drawn that, you can then make it a component. So two finger click, make component, and we can call it the door. Now we did make that a millimeter shorter either side in terms of the height, but because we copied that curve, it's gonna be exactly the same width. So in order to fix that, what we can do is select the component, pick up the scale tool. Ensure you pick up the middle one, the middle dock there. I'm going to click, drag it left. You'll see at the scale there, you're just going to type 0 0.99. And press enter. Effectively, because it's a 300mm wide door, that would drop it. 1% off, so it would drop basically one and a half millimeters off either side of that door, which for our intensive purposes is fine. Another reason we have a gap for our components here, so when we're rendering it, we can see the difference. We can see the different components. You can see here I've married that up to the bottom point, the bottom left hand point, so we have a two and three mil gap. So we're going to use the move tool here to drag it right and left. Now this is sometimes it, you need to just play around with it a little bit. You do need to orbit around so that you're looking straight at the front of it. So when using the move tool here, I'm just going to drag this up. It does push back here, but eventually it will drag onto the same line. As long as it's dragging up on the same line, you can then enter one and press enter. And that'll, because we had a two millimeter gap there, we dragged it up one. And we'll have a one millimeter gap on the bottom and the top. I'm gonna do the same here. So we're gonna pick up that move tool. I'm gonna drag it from left to right here. It will bounce around a little bit, but once we drag it in that general direction, now we can type 1.5 and press enter and that will drag it 1.5 millimeters in the direction we dragged it. So all you're really needing to do there with the move tool is drag it in the position you want it to eventually go and you type in the number in terms of one millimeter or one and a half millimeters. And that's placed our door right where we want it with that gap around the whole way. Okay, now we're going to draw the draw. Funnily enough, I'm going to type in 282 by 186. It's important that that 282 runs along your front plane there. I push pull that at four millimeters. This is the base of our draw. I'm going to highlight that with the mouse. Two finger click, make component call it the draw base. Don't worry about that replace box that came up, that's just because I was playing around and making components before. If you call it a draw base, it won't come up with that, which would be good. Now I'm going to draw the side, a rectangle, we're going to type in 12, 200 push pull tool. I'm going to extrude that up 100 millimeters. I have a draw height of 100. Okay, that side's drawn, but we need to now put a groove in along there for the base to slide into. Tape measure tool, we're going to pick up a guide point 5 millimeters from that bottom point. Pick up the rectangle tool here. I'm going to draw a rectangle in 5 by 4. 
So that's five across, so right to left, four millimetres high. It's important you get those around the, around the right way. Our base is four millimetres high. I'm just going to the push-pull tool there and extrude that profile through to the other end to give us the groove that the base will be able to slide into. So again, it's important that that groove is four millimetres high and five millimetres deep. Once that groove's uh, drawn in, we can create a component and call it the draw side. I'm going to copy and paste that. Again, the beauty of component editing, I'm going to rotate that around. Again, just by using that move tool and hovering over the top, those plus signs will appear. I'm going to copy and paste that side again and rotate it around, even though it's the wrong length, but I can adjust the length rather than redrawing that groove and everything again. Now remember in this instance we need to right click and make that component unique otherwise the edit we make will edit on the sides as well. Pick up the mouse pointer, double click on that component and then push pull the end, I'm going to make it longer by another 96 millimeters. so just type in 96 and press enter. Once that's, that's done, we can uh, copy and paste that back. We can paste that onto the front. Using that move tool, hover over the plus sign and rotate it around so that groove, all your side pieces should have that groove facing inwards for the base then to slide into. Now we need to make the draw front so we've made the draw carcass, now we're going to make the draw front. Create a rectangle 296 by 19. I'm going to use the pencil tool here to find the midpoint. Again, to pick up your two point arc. For the first point of the arc, the other end point, click each time, third click is in the middle. And that will give us the profile we need for the draw front. Pick up the erase tool and erase any lines you don't need. And then because our profile is now drawn we can pick up the push pull tool and push pull to 100mm high. Interesting here is for the door obviously we'll use bent lamination, so plywood, whereas this drawer front here is actually a solid piece of timber that we're simply going to um, shape with a plane and a sander. Make that a component and call it the drawer front. Again, don't worry about that replace window, that won't come up for you. Now we need to assemble the drawer together. Now we've got our pieces. So we're going to pick up the move tool, that point there, the top left point. I'm going to drag it across into the groove that we created. Pick up that top point in the groove and click off. Again, mouse pointer into the open to make sure it's deselected. Now we can orbit it around and see that the back, obviously we don't need this groove at the, the front. We need that to be in the middle. Just going to check here using the tape measure tool. That's 14 millimeters. So effectively, we need to slide that base from left to right seven millimeters to make sure it's in the middle of the side there. So we're going to pick up the base, pick the move tool, slide it in the direction we need. Once it's going in that direction, we can type seven, press enter, and that will actually slide that base along the groove. So it now lies in the middle.
We'll do the same thing here, so pick up that point of uh, the draw side, drag it across to the base. I'm going to have to orbit around here and effectively move that side from right to left, so pick up the move tool, slide it in the direction we need, and then just type in 7, that will ensure it goes exactly 7 millimeters across. Front and side's a lot easier because we just drag that outside edge to the outside edge of the side. The reason they overlap is in reality we're going to make these dovetail joins. And they overlap as a join. We're not going to draw that detail in this time. We're going to drag that front part of the draw to so it overlaps the sides as well. Okay, so that's just outlining there that this will be a dovetail joint. Mouse click onto the open air there just to deselect everything else. And then we can move the draw front from that point onto the front. And that is our draw. Our draw is drawn. I'm going to write uh, two finger click and actually make this a group, okay, so that we can move this entire group of components that is the draw. We can group them, and once they're a group, we can now move that entire draw over to the main carcass and insert it in. I'm going to drag from that top left point, zoom in and out, and actually drag it onto that point. And then we're going to have to do something similar here to what we did with the door. So we're going to drag it across right, pick up the move tool, drag it in the general direction, type in two millimeters, this time we had a two mil gap on each side, and we're going to drag it down one millimeter. Now our drawer is done. Here you can see because it's a group component we can then effectively pick up the move tool here and play around and move the drawer in and out as if it was real. There's our main component stun for the carcass, door and drawer. Now we move on to the top. Alright, now we're going to move on to uh, drawing the top going to open up um, a drawing I've done earlier here for you just to give you a look at how difficult this is going to be because we're going to have the curve in the top you can see there but we also need to put a splay in underneath which is a bit like a chant for this detail here and because of that curve at the front you, you can't just simply draw that profile from the back and extrude it through because it won't go the whole way um, so we need to pick up another um, technique here, um, which is basically, um, as you can see, it's still, sh yeah, still showing you that curve detail and why you can't just simply extrude it through. So we're going to use a subtract tool to do that, but we'll draw the top first. We'll draw it as a rectangle first. Into 460, 260. Make sure that 460 is the length along the front. I'm just going to get the tape measure tool, and from that front point, 
measure that 30, measure that 38 millimeters back. And uh, go through the motions of drawing this front arc. So drawing that pencil line across to the other side and finding that midpoint, giving us our point so we can draw our arc in. And we always go uh, for this kind of thing to the two point arc clicking at one side and the other, and then third click in the middle of the arc there. Once doing that, you can erase those lines that you don't need. And we can, uh, once those lines are erased, we can extrude or push pull. do here, push pull that up to 19 millimetres and the thickness of our timber for the top there. Make that a component as the top, even though we haven't put that splay in and that's actually required, we need to put, make that a component for the subtract tool to use, which I'll show you soon. So yeah, now we're going to actually draw the profile as a separate component. So the bit we need to cut out, we're going to draw here. So into a rectangle 40 by 260. And push pull that up nine millimeters. I'm going to get the pencil tool here and just draw in the diagonal. The reason we've done those dimensions is so we can get this diagonal, which will be the profile of that splay underneath the, the tabletop. I'm going to get the push-pull tool here. So you just draw on the diagonal and then push-pull that half that we don't need all the way to that back edge. Okay, so that's going to be the profile where we take away from the bottom of the table. So we're going to make that a component. Call that the subtraction. We're going to have to actually copy that, paste it over for the other side because once we use the subtract tool we'll actually lose that component. You'll see what I mean when I do it in a second. Alright so we're just going to drag that bottom profile that bottom point into where it's going to actually sit and this is the this is the part where we really need to get right. I'm going to go to solid tools, subtract. I'm going to select the subtraction first and a, a little two will come up, we'll select the tabletop. Once we select or we'll press um, on the button on the second time, it will take that away. So the subtract tool works really well because it doesn't take into account that curve at the front, it just subtracts anything where that, that goes in the way of this profile. It's a really good tool for using where you have difficult profiles that won't extrude simply just with the push-pull tool. Okay, so here again, we'll go to the subtract tool, so solid tools, Subtract, select your subtraction first and click, and then select the tabletop. And again, just to make that clear that it just doesn't take into account that curve, it just subtracts everything in its way.
Okay, now we're just going to simply move the tabletop from this bottom to that splay profile there. Select that point. That will meet up the outside back back edge of that that leg. See that matches over the other side, which is excellent. So that's our the drawing of the bow front cabinet completed. Once we get to this stage, we need to give it some colour and do some renders. We can do some animations, etc. in SketchUp. So that will be on the next video.